Today we're going to have a look at the, uh, at the hives and cover the, the question we often get and that's how to tell when your flow hive's ready to harvest. So let's take a look at some of these hives and have a look at the differences between the frames and have a look at some frames that are ready to harvest. We will actually harvest some honey so stay tuned in for that. If I open the window here then I can see the bees are actually uh, filling up these cells really nicely. Now this was supered 18 days ago, so it's springs come, this split. Okay, I might as well stop it. And can you start again? Uh, and that was connected to the new Wi-Fi. Yeah. 2.4 or whatever. You can finish and start again. Yeah. Oh no, we're back up. Okay, we're back up now. Uh, this hive has been about 18 days since we supered it and you can see them putting that beautiful nectar into the frames. If you come and have a look at the side window, now it's not always that fast, it just happens to be springtime here and the bees are really, really going for it, bringing in the nectar. So we're sort of matching up the side window and the end window to gauge what's going on inside the hive and you can see the bees there doing their beautiful job and the nectar glistening in the cells of the flow frame. So you can see that that isn't ready to harvest because the bees haven't put their wax capping onto the frame yet. We'll go and have a look at what it looks like when the bees complete the cells, dry the honey out and put their wax capping back on. So if you come down this way, there's uh, quite a few hives here at various different stages. So this one here, you can have a look. We did harvest some honey from this yesterday. We also harvested some honey from this week. So we've got a bit of a, uh, a difference between them. This was the frame we harvested yesterday. And you can see here, there's not much honey in it at all, although they've already taken the capping off and started to fill this cell here with, with honey again, with nectar. So, um, this frame here, in contrast, looks like it's quite full. You can see the capping. Now, if a frame looks like that, then it's ready to harvest. It's a pretty good gauge what's happening on the end to what's happening in the middle. If we come around to the side window, just to get an idea of what it looks like here, you can see a, a, a lot of capped honey there. If you have a look, a little bit hard to see, there's lots of bees, but you can see instead of being all the open hexagons with the nectar glistening, it's wax that's been capped off like a, a sheet, it's called the capping. And that's when the bees have reduced that water content usually to below 20%. And that means that honey will keep so the bees can use it later. And also means it's ready for, the, uh, for us if we choose to harvest some. You can see a waggle dance going on there. Just uh, centre screen now. There's um, there's a bee. Okay, just stopped. Got a little 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 camera shy. Okay, still waggling a little bit. So, be interesting to see what it's telling. It looks like it's a round dance, which means the nectar's really quite close by. So, as you tune in with the bees, you can start to tell actually how far away they're flying to to get their nectar just by the dance on the honeycomb surface. Okay, let's go back to the uh, to the view of the frames. Now this was my father and I's invention and one of the things we, we added, which turned out to be a wonderful thing, is the, uh, the view into the frames where you can really tell what's going on. And this view changes day by day depending on what's going on with your bees and the flowers. So it's um, quite a nice thing to, to look at this regularly and see whether they're got honey coming in or whether they haven't and if they've got honey coming in they're building up and there's some full frames then it's a good time to harvest. Now what I'm going to do is connect these little shelf brackets. Now this uh, keyhole here at the top just goes onto the screw. Now if you've got that pre-adjusted it's pretty simple. Put that over the screw and just turn it like that. Same on the other side. Over the screw turn it into position. 
Now the cover that we pulled off here earlier slots right in here to form the shelf like that and next we'll grab a jar and choose that nice full frame we were talking about here and take the cap out like that take the key access cover out and the uh, top cap making way for the honey now don't forget to put your tube in there's a little little piece here which goes into the bottom of the frame now if you've got questions put them in the comments below because we're here every week to answer your questions to help you get started and also let us know what you'd like to see we've been covering things like catching swarms doing splits doing brood inspections if there's something you really want to know about then let us know in the comments below and we'll be sure to cover it soon okay now if you insert this key then just go a little way at first and turn it and what that does is it opens part of the frame it can be a bit hard to open the whole frame at once so um, if you do it in segments it's a lot easier okay and one more I'm just going to leave the key in that vertical position to add pressure to any cells that are still releasing because they're covered in wax and propolis all the cells are joined together and what you're actually doing is moving the working parts of the flow frames and breaking the, the wax that the bees have, have put in place there. And meanwhile, your bees are just on the, the frame surface. So today we're covering how to tell when your flow hive is ready to harvest. If you've got questions, put them in the comments below and we can answer them live. Or if you want to let us know what you'd like to see next time, then also put that in the comments. See, the Cassie's asking, does it cause issues when the bees build wax on the viewing windows? Okay, you did notice, well picked up, that when we looked in the viewing window, there was a bit of wax. It doesn't cause issues really. It's only um, when you go to pull the frame out, it can get a little bit more messy. So it's not really an issue. If you, if you pull your frame out, the bees will usually start chewing that away again. It's more an aesthetic thing that you might like to clean up one day. Now that honey's raging out, it's a nice warm day here and we better remember to um, swap these jars. So someone remind me if I'm stuck answering questions and um, missing filling up those jars of honey. Wow, that's yum. I love honey. <laughs> okay, keep putting in your questions below while we keep on harvesting. Now, what you're seeing here, if you have a look, is um, the, the pattern of the honey draining towards the center, down to the bottom and out of the tube and into your jar. If you come to this one, this is the frame we harvested yesterday. You can see the bees are already down there fixing up all those cells and starting to deposit honey again. This one over here, we haven't harvested recently. we we'll better change that jar. And it's quite full still. We've capped a couple of these frames we harvested last week, so the bees are doing well. It's the time of year when the honey really comes in around here in our springtime in the, in the southern hemisphere. So Cedar, how often can you harvest during spring and summer? So that really depends on your bees and whether there's a good nectar flow. If, if, if you've got a healthy hive, lots of bees in there and a nectar flow, then they can fill them up really quick. Now, you hear of people filling a whole hive in a day, which is pretty hard to believe. I find the quickest around here is a couple of weeks to fill the full frames. However, you can also find that months can go by where the bees are actually hungry. There's not enough nectar around and, and not much happens in your flow frame during that time. So it really depends. Lots of bees, good nectar flow equals fast filling of the frames keep the questions coming. How often do you need to check the brood box and do you need to do that before you harvest? Okay so the brood box down here is just the same as any normal Langstroth beehive now it also needs the same care it's always had so that to find out what you need to do to care for your brood box it's best to ask local beekeepers because here 
we um, commercial beekeepers tend to inspect their brood box a couple of times a year. Now, in in other uh, continents, you've got the varroa mites that during the summer season you might need to inspect and treat a lot more often. So find out from your um, local beekeepers, local bee clubs, or our honeyflow.com forum when um, how much you need to do in order to look after your bees. Do you need to remove the wax capping after you harvest? Now that was a stroke of luck. It was um, took a lot of testing. We developed it over a 10 year period and we thought we had all of these designs, my dad and I, to remove the cappings within the hive thinking that that's what we'd need to do. But we found that after we got a system happening where the honey could drain out from beneath the feet and leave the capping in place, that the uh, bees just chewed it away, fixed up the cells and the whole process start, started again. Now, it is um, it does go a little bit quicker if you get a little bit of disturbance on the, on the capping, and sometimes you do, you get a bit of torn capping when you harvest your flow frame, in which case the bees are straight in there to, to fix them up and get the idea. However, even if the, the capping stayed perfectly intact, the bees walking on it must be like an empty drum skin and uh, they, they realise that it's actually time to take that capping off and fix up the cell. Jason's asking how do you defend the floral hive to traditionalists? Okay, now that's a good question. Um, my dad and I invented this hive, we brought, we brought it to the world in, in 2015 and I think the way it came to the world it's got so much attention that um, naturally a, a, a lot of um, conventional beekeepers had to push back because it was, this, it was coming from every direction. There was just thousands of friends and people and people emailing them and saying, check out this, check out this. And they're like, go away. <laughs> I've seen it, I've seen it. And um, you also get that thing of, like if you've been doing darkroom photography all your life and it's, it's um, a long labor-intensive process to get to get your photo and then somebody comes along and goes here's a um, here's a, a new digital thing that you don't need to do all of that process anymore you get the photo straight away then of course you're going to get pushback so it's natural and it's something to be expected and in terms of how to defend it all you can do is say um, well one that it does work because there's still this skepticism out there that that happened from square one and you can also um, say, look, it, I, I don't mind however people want to keep bees. It's a great way to keep bees. It's great that you're keeping bees and, uh, and you know, my choice is to, to use the flow hive because I love the technology and, and the ease of harvest. But actually, the beekeeping in terms of looking after your brood nest is just the same. So you can have a, a box that's got um, conventional supers or, or flow supers or, or mixed together. So it doesn't have to be black and white either, flow hive or not flow hive. So, so um, I guess, you know, it's a matter of talking about it and dispelling some of those myths. There's, there's myths that started from the beginning, from the first week when nobody had even tried it or seen it, saying that it's gonna kill the bees and it's gonna be the end of bees and therefore civilization as we know it and all of this crazy stuff. And it, you know, of course it's not true, it's just a beautiful, gentle way to harvest if you choose to harvest in this way. See, the Barbara has um, a question. She's in Newcastle and just harvard, harvested her first frame and she said it was slow and she only got 400 grams. Okay, so if you only got a small amount of honey when you harvested your flow frames, there's a couple of reasons why that could happen. Um, one is um, the frame probably wasn't full. Now, if, if it indicated that it was full here, but actually you didn't get much honey, then, um, then there's a few reasons for that. One is if you left the key in that position, or, or if you just turned it quickly, maybe all of the parts of the cells didn't lift and didn't provide those channels for the honey to flow down. So that's one reason. The other reason is the bees could be, 
could, could be a little bit hungry. Perhaps they were full, they got a bit hungry and they started to eat away the honey. So then you can get in a situation where there's capped ripe, ripe honey around the edges and usually this arc in the middle of the frame. Now, the honey's still good that comes out, but you, you won't get as much. And if you, if you harvest a frame and you notice that, then maybe wait a little bit longer for them to refill those cells as the flowers come on. Um, the other reason could be the slope of your hive. If you've got your hive sloped towards the front, then maybe the honey didn't drain out correctly and some honey actually ended up spilling into your hive. So that's another reason. But either way, it's nice to, to do a frame or two, gauge what's going on, have a look how quickly it fills back up, see what's happening in the windows, work out whether there's a honey flow and whether your frames are nice and full, ready to harvest. Let us know how you go next time. If you're having trouble, write to us. We're always here to help you. Sarah says, do you have to harvest the honey in order to keep the bees healthy? What happens if the box is full? That's a great question. The bees are storing their honey for times when there's no flowers. And lucky for us, they store more than they need and we can have some too. Now, you can choose not to harvest and just leave it there for the bees. So you can go away for months at a time and the, uh, you can just leave the flow frames full. It doesn't matter. You don't have to harvest. You can just harvest one frame or even a, a little part of a frame if you want to. It's up to you. If you live in a cold climate area, you do need to leave enough honey for the bees to survive the winter. And that information is best found from your local beekeepers who know how best to, to get your flow hive to last through the winter. I think Kathy is asking, how mm. can you tell when the honey is capped in the middle of the frame? Okay. The, the only really sure way to tell whether it's capped in the middle is by opening up your hive and pulling a frame out. I don't do that before I harvest because I can get a really good idea by looking at the, this view and the side view to know whether it's likely that the bees have capped the center. Now, if they haven't completely capped it, it's not the end of the world. Beekeepers generally take a frame if it's 70% capped and, and then, you know, in the conventional methods. So if it's not all capped, it's not the end of the world. However, if your honey is really runny, you will have to eat it before it starts turning into mead because if the water content's higher than 20%, it, it may start to ferment after some time. Um, no problem in our household in eating honey. <laughs> so um, so if it, you can tell by, uh, once the jar's cooled down, it's quite warm now, just by having a look at the viscosity. If it's, if it's nice and thick, it'll last on the shelf generally. Or you can get a, a, a device to, um, to tell the water content of your honey. Um, but yet, yeah, getting back to your question, sometimes you do get in a situation where they've eaten out a portion in the middle and started to fill it with nectar again. You'll see it in your jar. Sometimes you get a two-tone honey or, or s some uh, more, more liquid honey that comes out first and then the rest of the honey. But I find looking at these frames here and looking at the sides, you can, after a while, learn what it means. If you're unsure, go ahead and pull frames out and start to have a look at what this looks like and what to compare to what's inside your hive. Paul would like to know what do you do to get crystallized honey in your flow frames? Okay, good question. We actually had that um, a couple of weeks ago because we've, we've come out of the, the winter here and the paperback honey is, a, is, is one that crystallizes now. We found that plenty of honey still came out, but some crystallized honey did stay in the frames. Now, in the beginning, there was lots and lots of people concerned about crystallized honey not coming out, but we haven't had any complaints about it at all. And I think the reason being is because the bees keep it warm, so it's less likely to be crystallized. And if it is staying to crystallize, then it's usually partially crystallized and starts to flow out, leaving the the, uh, the bigger crystals behind in the frames. Now, I did do some experiments on this early on. I, um, I, put, I, I took frames out of the hive and I let them go candied because I knew it was the paper bark. I put it back in and then I tried to turn the key. And what happened is I got a bit of movement and it, 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 the bees detected that the, the frame had a bit of movement. 
inside and they ate all of the capping off. They ate all of the candy out and then uh, refilled it with liquid again. So the bees solved the problem. Now, candied honey in frames, if you do get it, um, isn't new to beekeeping at all. It's the same with uh, spinning your honey. Actually, a little bit worse if you're going to spin because you take the frames out, they cool down overnight, and the candy really, really sets in. And, um, and then you go to spin it, and a lot stays in your frames. So, haven't found it's a big problem, but do let us know if it, if it causes you any issues. Thanks for all the good questions. Ben wants to know if we recommend only keeping one brood box under the super yep. or two to minimise swarming. Okay, that's a great question. Now, um, what I find is if you are going to add another brood box, then do it after you've got your flow super full because if you go and then put your flow super up above a few boxes, it'll take a long time for them to get up there and fill them and you'll actually get quite impatient. <laughs> because you want to see some action in, in your flow frames and want to see this beautiful experience of the honey coming out. So if you are going to add another brood box, then wait till they've filled the flow frames first and there's plenty of bees in your hive. Now, that question is best, um, depends on your practices. So, so around here, people typically want run a single brood box, but um, many parts of the world, including the colder climates, they like to run a couple of brood boxes so there's a bit more storage often there's there's not as much brood box in this brood in the second one there's a bit more storage for your um, bees to survive the winter in the cold times um, also getting back to your question to limit swarming um, it definitely will help with that so if um, if you don't want to take a split and you don't want your hive to swarm adding another brood box could be a good idea now or another super for that matter we find that the number of cells in a single brood box actually is enough for the queen to lay. So there's enough room for the queen to lay and keep a really productive hive in a single box. However, some people do like to, to add a second one. Does the flow hive fit standard eight frame and 10 frame Langstroth boxes? Yes, it does. So. Um, this one with six flow frames because we made our frames a bit wider for the honey storage reasons. It is a eight frame Langstroth size. So you can then put another eight frame Langstroth box on top if you want to collect some honeycomb um, or, or add another brood box to it. And we also have the 10 frame Langstroth size, which suits seven. We had to do a bit of maths to get that right. So, so six, flow frames equals eight, seven flow frames equals 10. Now, having said that, the standards do, do vary quite a bit. So you can expect sometimes to have um, discrepancies between box sizes. And uh, it's generally not an issue, but some people get concerned about that. Okay, we've got time for a few more questions. And Betsy says we're about two to three weeks from our first freeze in northwest Texas. Her frames are about 70% capped. Should she harvest before the freeze or wait until a warmer day after the freeze? Okay, that's a, that's a good question. And it, it's, it depends on your strategy to overwinter. If you've got a, a, another brood box or an, an, another honey box with honey for them to survive, um, then that'd be a good thing. I'm going to have to get another jar but um, I'll keep answering that question. Um, so I'll just be back in, in one moment. But yeah, it really does um, depend a little bit because you may need to, uh, to leave that honey for them to survive the winter. Or you may be planning to sugar feed and that depends a little bit on how you want to manage your uh, hive. So 70% um, capped if you hadn't tried any flow hive honey, I'd at least harvest a frame to experience it because it's a, it's a wonderful thing and, and leave the rest for the bees. Um, or, uh, and we've got some FAQs about what to do for the overwintering bit in terms of needing to remove the queen excluder. Um, but yeah, if you haven't tried it, then you can try a frame or even half a frame just to 
to watch it happen and taste what flavors coming in. Um, Can we, I turn to one more? Yep. Um, Marisol has her slow hives by a fence. Um, she says, it's more convenient to put the harvest side forward. How much space should I leave at the front entrance for the bees to fly in since it will face the fence? Okay, the answer is a bit more space than this fence here. <laughs> As you can see, we've got a fence right in front. And uh, what happens is the bees tend to, to put their flight path right past our heads because they can't actually get a good run up and out. So, so um, best to have more space than this. The, the fence is only a metre and a half away here and we've also got a bush in front. So I think that um, it, it, if, uh, if you don't want them to fly past your head, and it depends if you've got friendly bees like these are, then it doesn't matter. Um, well, there's less likelihood of, of stings if they're friendly, but um, if you do want to stay out of the flight path of the bees, then you might need to angle the hive to direct them more along the fence line and out. So um, it's up to you, but it does depend. People keep bees in all sorts of locations, and um, it's just about working out what's going to work best for you on top of rooftops, in the bedroom with a pipe out the window, <laughs> all sorts of things. Okay, thank you very much for for watching and all your great questions. If you've got more, you can put them in the comments below and we'll be back next week this time with something interesting to show you.